Google makes all kinds of different uh, features available to you um, in both uh, even in in, in uh, YouTube in their maps you know they have all kinds of services here okay putting a search on your site you can go and, and, and put a search box on your site and use Google technology to have a search box on your site um, of course YouTube you can integrate into your site and they have a whole bunch of other features. I don't know if I've done the tr calendar, but you can put a translate on your site. Where it'll convert your site to any language you want. Very easy to do and interesting to do. Okay, so if you want to have people the ability to translate the site. Now, of course, that doesn't rewrite the content because, you know, some languages, the verb and noun are switched, right? Spanish, the verb and noun are switched and things like that. So. But uh, that, that works quite well. Um, I haven't really done the wallet or any of these other ones here. But um, probably the most popular one, of course, is maps. Because maps are used by people for all kinds of different things. Searching for something or maybe j just to give somebody um, an idea of a location of something without even searching. Uh, to use the Google Maps, of course, they have a whole area for the developers uh, here and it's called Google Maps API and maps for every platform so they make that maps available for everything from your Android or if I am building an app on my phone uh, my Android phone I can integrate the map in there same with your Mac in your iOS uh, you do have map features but of course in the Mac operating system for uh, you know for the iOS uh, Apple has their own map Okay, which is really integrated with the programming in the Swift programming. So if you're really going to do some mapping, mapping in iOS, probably take advantage of the Apple Map uh, features because they're integrated with the operating system. And of course, web. Okay, is mostly what we'll do is with with code and HTTP services. Um, um, toolkit for the real uh, it's for map directions and everything also okay so there's a whole bunch uh, the ones I was doing was of course the web one right here if you click on web um, you can integrate the map several different ways into your website of course we already know probably the easiest way to do that would be to use the, the normal the normal simple map feature of course if we just go to Google Maps and we type in a specific location and we go down to our share button of course we can share our embedded code right here into our site one of the things to keep in mind about embedding the code is that the code has I guess we'll have to use this horrible Dreamweaver again. Horrible. Um, the code has oh, the code has geez, a height and width here. Okay, so. Um, it's going to have a fixed size by default, but you can go in and adjust the um, size with CSS, um, which I did an example, but I don't know where it's at at this point. So, but again, if you just test it. To what? No, this is just a plain iframe. You could use it anywhere. And who invented the iframe? Microsoft. They did. They integrated in Internet Explorer 3 many years ago. Also, they had the, the, the original downloadable fonts, 1997. Microsoft Internet Explorer. <clears throat> 
And of course they were sued by Adobe the first week because they were violating the licensing agreement from Adobe, right? Because a, a font is a licensed thing, and if you buy a font and you use it on your computer, it's great for your computer. But if you put it on your website and anybody can download it, you'd be violating the licensing agreement. So they got sued within the first week by Adobe and lost. And downloadable fonts were removed from Internet Explorer. Okay, sorry. I remember those days. Okay, again, there you go. You got your, your uh, map with a fixed size. I don't know. How do you think we can make it responsive? Width of 100%? So I don't know. Even if we try, I don't know. Let's see. We'll put 100% in there. I don't know. See what it does. Get rid of the height, maybe, completely. <coughs> Somewhat worked. Doesn't respond, though. Doesn't change size. It just makes it huge. Look at that. 100% of what? 100% of the world will be going on forever. Max width? Well, no, the width is 100%, but the height is not responsive. The time frame does not do 100% height. It's been like a day and a half trying to fiddle with time frame, and it just frustrated me that I just put a set height. Time frame is stubborn. I don't know. Let's get rid of height. What did that do? Did it do anything? No, nope, just made it long and skinny. So maybe that's not a solution. But they do have a solution in their API, okay, of how to get it to fit a fixed size. Okay, so without using iframe, okay, there's another way of doing it. Okay. So again, back to the Google Maps API. Oh, let's get back to one more thing before we go to the map here. The other thing you might want to integrate is uh, a picture of a business, right? So Google, you've seen them drive around with their little cars and the little thing on top of the car, right? And they're taking pictures as they're going along, okay? So uh, inside there, of course, they have uh, this little thing down here. Okay, at the very bottom right here, which is a 360 degree street view. It's called street view. You can integrate that into your website as well as if you click on, of course, the street view here. It takes you to our fabulous street view. Somebody drove down to the, before they blew up the building in the front down there. Actually, this is old. Yeah, this was quite old. Oh yeah, look, November 2007. Click on the picture in the lower left corner. You can use it with an iframe by clicking this uh, little dots that are up here in the upper corner right there. What's that? I'm not using any API yet. I'm just I'm just using the straight Google Maps at this point. And you go up here. If you want to use the picture view like this, you're going to put a picture of a business on there. You, and you're going to use the iframe feature. It's right here in the upper, the little dots here. And you say share and embed here. And you can then go and suck up the iframe that way. See the iframe that way right there. And then go to your code and paste it in there as well. Give ourselves a P tag. And then paste it in there. And we can have the map as well as a um, view. Sorry, let me get rid of these windows. They're driving me crazy. And then, and then you can have your map as well. Okay, and this is fully interactable. Interactable, is that a word? Interact interactive. interactive, where you can start, you know, moving it around. You know. Woo, yes, this is old. Old picture. Is there a way to do what? Is there a way to put street view in the iframe? This is an iframe. 
Okay, here it is. It, I clicked. I clicked in the upper corner after you click the street view right here. The little dots up here. See the dots? Click there, and then it says share and embed image. You want to put Google Earth on there? There you go, Google Earth. Share and embed right there. So in addition, you can include a map that looks like that. It has a top view. But again, this is kind of limiting. I'm not really sure how much you can customize this. Um, you got 3D tilt. You can rotate. Again, you can share this as well in your page. So again, we got our map, our street view, and now our three, what are we calling this? Um, 3D kind of look or satellite view. Okay, satellite view. But again, they're all kind of very limiting. If you want to be able to expand your map, you need to use more of their programming features that they have. So let's go back to the Google Map API. So let's just read again. It says, embed Google Maps features and functionality into your site. So in this case, uh, use Google's native web APIs for visualizing maps and accessing rich map features like accurate directions, street views, whether you write JavaScript in your sleep or can't write a single line of code, we got you covered. Again, they have different ways of embedding, OK? You know, they got JavaScript way, embed way, Street Image View, Google Static Map API, and Google Places API JavaScript library. So they have a whole bunch of different ways of doing it. They have different ways of visualizing the data. Like this one, a lot of the, the um, people that sell real estate would want to be able to show the value of houses around the area, possibly, that somebody is looking at. And you'll be able to do that through programming. And that's sort of what they're talking about here. Um, and so they give you some examples and so on and then of course mat, um, features and then they have different ways of looking at the code and then um, so on. So in order to take advantage of those is you need to get a key right here. Get a key. Okay. So and, and what I found is that you need a key for the specific option that you want to do. There are different keys. So if I am going to embed with JavaScript, it's going to be one key. If I'm going to embed this way or do the street view, these they actually have different keys according to which way you're going to do it. So I, I left my example at home, so I have to go through and or on my laptop, I think I have it. Um, so let's try the JavaScript way. So in this case, I click on that. And I go down to the type of map I'm looking for. Okay, they have different types of map. Create a map with a marker. Visualize data. Create marker clusters. And uh, and then they have some demos down here of what the code would look like. Of once you find the location you're looking for. And of course, first thing you do is find the location. And then, uh, again, you need a code to be able to do that right here. Get your code. And then the code has to be approved as well. So uh, I found that I had to get the code and then go into my uh, login and get the code approved before it would work. Okay, so in order to take advantage of that, I had to get the code and then go and get the code approved and then the code would work. So the, the probably the simplest one I did, I think, was the um, this one with the uh, static map, this one right here. So 
This one was the simplest one I did. And basically what a static map is, is where you give an, actually somebody an image of the map and not necessarily a, a live map. And why would you want to do that? Well, somebody might want to print it, save it, or something like that. I'm not really sure, but it gives you an image of a map. So I did this one. It was quite easy to do. I clicked on the, um, again, I'm using the one, again, if you want to see which one I'm using. I'm using the one that says Google Static Map. Google embed an image map without JavaScript or dynamic page loading. Of course, probably, you know, at least you can you can make sure that the image is going to be correct, right? Because you can take the map and make it an image and then embed that image. And, and of course, that image can then be fully um, 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 scalable. So you don't have the iframe problem, right? Okay, so... Um, Create your map based on URL parameters and send through a standard HTTPS request. Display the map as an image. Okay, so um, again, it's not sending. You can have it send you a, a image of the area and not necessarily uh, the map. Map, if that makes any sense. I don't know if it does. So um, how I did this uh, example is I went to get the key. First step was to get a key. So I went to get a key and I logged in using my standard login. I use the one that I use for my um, for my uh, YouTube channel, YouTube channel login, because that's a Google account, right? You got YouTube, you got a Google account. So I logged in using my YouTube channel account. Once I logged in. Um, I think I logged in. I'm still waiting. Oh, this is the wrong one. This is wrong. Shit. I got bad, bad accounts now on Google. For some reason I have a bad account. Somebody's hacking me. Oh. No, it's it's there's something wrong with this uh, account. I have like some some this maybe might be better. Uh, hold on, uh, get a key. Is there a way to remove this account? Shit. Yeah. Okay. Enable. Okay, there we go. So uh, you need to create a project. And so I'm doing what? Static map. So give your project a name. Uh, create and enable API. Then it gives you a key. And this is your key right here. So it gives you your API key. But then you have to go to the console, the API console here, and get that key approved. Okay, so this key doesn't work just as it is, because that's the first thing I did. I thought, oh, great, I got my key. Woohoo! Okay, so then I went and I went and tried to put the key in, and it wasn't working. So then I said, well, why, why is it not working? Well, you have to go to the console here and get that key approved. I don't know what that means or why you have to get it approved, but um, I got the key. And then I went to the console. And then here's the one I did on March 7th. What is today? Say March 7th, isn't it? Well, no, this is my key. How did I get this to work? So then I, yeah, I went to this window. And then um, uh, maybe I saved it here. Yeah. 
Yeah. So go to that console, and then I saved it here. Again, here's my key. And then I saved it. And once I, I saved it like that, um, I got it to work. Maybe I had to create create credentials too. Use your application by password to pay your I think I had to do this as well. Oh, now it gave me a second key. Well, whatever, let's try. I had to go through there and, and, and get it approved through this credential window to be able to use the key, is what I'm trying to say. I'm not sure exactly. Um, I, I think I clicked on the save here, and I got it approved. What's that? Saving. I don't know. I went to this window, and I hit save, and once I was able to do that, I was able to use the key. Yes. Yes. This credential. Yep. To get your code. See how it says credentials right here? The first time I tried this, it did not work. And the reason why is I don't think I had my credentials approved. Once I got the credentials approved using this credential window, I was able to make that code work. Again, I was using the static one. So again, without this, this is a different code for some reason. I don't know why I got this code and then I have another code. <coughs> One of them worked for me. Let's put it that way. So then I went um, start developing. And, uh, um, and so then they give you a simple uh, access. This is an example of the Brooklyn um, and of course, I, I kept saving my code so I, I didn't lose them because they're in my memory right now. Here's, here's one of the codes that I got approved. So let me see if that one works. So to test it, I'm just going to use their example to test it. I'm going to use their example that they have right here. And so I'm going to test their example here by copying their code. And let's make a page. And paste their code. Then, of course, you need to put in your API key at the end here. And so then I went to my API key here. And I put it at the end where it said your API key. And then I saved it. And then I previewed it, and it didn't work. Oh, I have to put it into an image tag. That's why. Um, I swear it's going to make it as an image. That's why. It's an image tag. You put this in an image tag because it sees it as an image. Because remember, this is seeing it as an image and not a... Um, yeah, so you have to put it in an image tag. I believe that's how I did it. I, I got the Berkeley one to work. I got this one to work right here. Uh, I believe it was an image tag is what I used. Hold on. Then I showed you how to scale it here. <coughs> Here's the image formats. The image may be returned in several common web graphics formats, GIF, JPEG, or PNG. The format parameters take one of the following values. You can even use the satellite data image. 
You can change your map style type. You can add markers to it for a pin. You can add custom icons like I talked about, how you can add your own icons if you would like to the map. So see how these ones are custom icons right here, custom icons. I, don't know, I guess that's a train. Is that a train? Um, And then you can add um, location, where you could have somebody, it could draw a line to how they get somewhere. So you can have directions. And I, I guess the whole point here is that you could give your user the ability to type in a location or directions and it can return an image to them on their device that's customized for them but it returns a value of not not the map but a image of what they're requesting does that make sense it's an image of what they're requesting that's sort of why they have so many different examples here <laughs> say somebody's trying to find a location they could type in where they're at Parsons schools and they want to go here okay so it can return an image with that in the map. And then so they have a whole bunch. I, the one I got to work was the the um, Berkeley one. Not this one. What's that? How, how, many, how long does the API keys have value? I already have an API key. Can I use it? Can you use it? I, I don't know. I, I was thinking that the API key was specific to what you're trying to do. So you might have to get a different one depending upon um, which technique you're using. A Google Static a Map API image is embedded with an image tag, SRC attribute. Okay. So um, if we. Where's my, let's go back to the example. So uh, this would be an image tag. With quotes around it, of course. Oops, no need body. I guess we don't need closing image tag. I don't know, let's try it. So there we go. I got the New York one to work. Again, though, this is not a map. It's not an iframe. It's an image that you can save. So it's, it's a different way of using Google Maps instead of having to use the embed frame. You're using um, an image that then can have other characteristics, right? With the image tag, I can get 100% now, right? Without the problem of the iframe, right? So we can go in there give this some CSS and scale it to fit the size of whatever device I want. Especially if you're, you're trying to get it to be full screen on your phone, right? Right? Especially if you're trying to get it full screen on your phone. So again, it's an image. It's not the map itself. It's a, it's a copy of the map. So... people can customize it. Let's say you give your customer, you know, the ability to type in their address and then where you want them to go, it can give them an image of that. Yes, so it's 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 dynamic and changeable. Okay. It's not static. Yeah, it's changeable. Yeah.
at least there, that's why I'm going through. If you read some of these, they were showing you how to change it. I didn't go through all of them. I was just learning how to do it myself here. And then they gave you, they, I found an example where it can be scalable. And let me do the Berkeley one. The Berkeley one worked. In fact, it might be even totally um, the ability to go with your geolocation on your phone, right? Because your phone has uh, longitude and latitude, right? Then they have zoom levels. You can add different functions. Like I said, you can have add different options, different icons. You looking for that? Then they talk about sizes. And then I, I did find an example where it was scalable. <laughs> they have scale values. Whoosh, I don't want a fuzzy one. Such an image also performs well on desktop browsers when inserted in an image or div tag with the height and width set using CSS. The browser would downsize the image to the correct size without losing of quality. Okay, I guess we can try it. You want to get it to be uh, responsive? I have an image tag. We can do an image of what? 100%? What do you think? We can cheat and use our CSS designer. So. If I want to make this map 100%, what would I do? With 100%. Do I have to give it a height? Leave it blank. Let's see if it works. So it fits our full screen of our image. And it's scalable. So you could get it to fit a device. Now they had an example of how to get it to fit height and width wise. Uh, I don't know where, it's somewhere on the site where, where they said Here, here's a way to get it to fit both height and width for whatever, especially on a phone, right? Because you got the long and skinny like this, right? They did have an example on there. Um, I don't remember where it's at, but it was in that list there of how to get the map to fit the height and width. I don't know. Let's try it. <clears throat> no. And I think you could do it for the geolocation. But you see the problem with the iframe, though, right? There's problems with iframes. Maps are great with iframes, but there's other ways of doing maps other than just the iframe, taking advantage of Google's API and, and making dynamic. <coughs> there's also customized maps. You can do customized maps. I did find that. Oh, where was I at?
There's a map for um, satellite. Oh, here it is. Style map guide. Here it is. There's a there's a guide that you can go through, and you can adjust your map style. You can do everything from adjusting the um, colors to nighttime. In fact, they had the ability that if you if the day turned in the night, you could serve up an evening view, right? Because the evening view would have a kind of a dark with the light lines, where in the daytime it has light with dark lines, right? You know what I'm saying? I did read in here the ability to adjust the day to night and night to day. That way the person, if it's at night, will get a map that is formatted for evening. I did see that somewhere. This is not where I was at somewhere else. Okay, let's go back. That was static map. Let's try another one. Um, I did have one that worked with a uh, uh, street view. Did I get that one to work? Or just embedded map? Oh, this one has the iframe. But with with your, I have it somebody be calling me from Hercules. I need. So again, there's a key that you can get to try it. On. This is one where it converts the uh, app actual location into a map. This is probably the one you did in the first class, right? Did you guys do the geolocation one in the web development one class? Uh, latitude and longitude? Yes. Yeah, we did that one. Okay. So this is a way to put it in with the geolocation. Is the process of converting an address like a street asset into geographic coordinates like latitude and longitude which you can use to place markers on a map or position the map right you can test this by entering your URL into the web browser be sure to replace your Apple key with your actual API key and so they have that this is an amphitheater So let's try this one. So again, you have to get a key. I'm not sure if my same key would work. So again, I don't know, they're saying test it in the browser and then put your key in there. Let me see if my key works from the other example. No, that didn't work. Again, what I found was that I had to get a different key for each example. This is my actual API key. Get a key. Select a project. Get a new project. This one is what? This is a um, location.
And so, and then to improve your app's security, restrict the key's usage in the console. Oops. Save. So let me go and try that again. No, not that one. Where was it? Is it this one? Okay, it's giving me the results. So that key worked. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I think you need to get a key for each time that each different option that you want. You know what I'm saying? If you're doing a static one or you're doing a location one, this again, it's giving me the location here. Again, there was a couple different ways of going about it. There's a JavaScript way. Again, I had to get a different key for the this way as I did for the static one. I thought the static one was nice because you can scale it to whatever size you wanted. Um, at least easier that I found. Again, this one is a JavaScript way with coordinates. You got your longitude and latitude. And then, of course, you have to have your key as well. But I, I, I think you have to get a different key for each time. Okay? I don't know. I think you should look into the map and how to do a map other than just the iframe. Right? I don't know. You should look into the Google API. I got one more demo for today that I want to go over. Okay? And that's how to do your navigational bar within the jQuery. Okay? So not, not making a navigational bar, but how to go from page to page. I wanted to go over real quick. This will be a quick demo on how to... Um, Build a page in, um, let me log out here, stay logged in here. Okay, uh, this last sort of, I just wanted to uh, give you a, uh, yes? The, the image way or a regular map? The regular map from Google Maps with that API. Yeah, the iframe. Yeah, the iframe. Uh -huh. um, in your CSS, if you put HTML 100% height and 100% width as well as the body, it will make the iframe. Whatever you put in there. 100% yeah. height and width. But you have to classify HTML and body CSS. as yeah, in the CSS as 100% width and 100% you can also have it in the iframe as well, but it made it full screen. Mm -hmm. Well, web page, web frame. But that, that's a separate page then. I guess what I'm trying to say is that would take advantage of everything that's in that document. No matter what you put in that document, everything will be 100%. Unless you classify your um, divs like I have. No? No? Because I have a footer div in there, and that, that's not 100%. It's so that, that worked HTML out? It didn't page. mess that up? No. Um, it's just that the HTML page is now classified as 100% height and width. Apparently that's... Okay, let's try it. That'll be cool. So you just did a regular iframe? This is, oh no, this is an image, was it? No. Is this an image one? I think that's the iframe. Is this the iframe one? Oops, service worker. 
Let me see which one this is. Definitely not. Which one do I have? No. Oh, this one's the iframe. So let me get rid of these ones. Like that? Yeah, but in the CSS, you have to like make CSS. You say HTML and body are a home, like HTML comma body. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. And so you typed in what? 100% width. 100% width. Uh, the body width. No auto. And what did you do? Height? And then you did body as well? Yeah, you can just do HTML and comma space body. Apply the same thing to both. And it scaled it to the whole thing? Yeah. You might have to play around with the margin to see how much it Yeah, I'm sure there's a white space around the outside or whatever space. So there you go. If you want your map to fit the dimensions of your screen, which would be good if you, let's say you made a, a, a travel, a travel app, right? Travel app, and you wanted to give them location. And what was it? So I'd probably make this a separate file in a menu. So then you could, in theory, make your oh, geez, I'm saving it in here. <coughs> Let me copy it out of here. What is this called? Map test. Let me close some of this. Oh, this is my API for the map.
So let me get rid of this. And uh, let me make a simple list view. If I can get a list widget. Just make a simple list. Test, I think. Okay, so let me just test this. See how it fits with the jQuery. So we have a simple uh, navigational bar. Let's see how the map will fit in. Oh, kind of squeezed it at the top. Probably we want to have a sticky header and footer. And uh, I don't remember how I originally built this. Is this the same file? Let me open it up. Well, you might break it depending on what it breaks. So there it's full screen there. Maybe get it out of it. Um, so it's just On link. Your link, you want to add data dash ajax equals uh, quotation mark cost. Was that data? Data dash ajax. So it doesn't bring over the, yeah. the original layout. Let's try it now. There you go. But we'd have to have our menu in there, though, our burger menu to go back. I think that would be the next step. That's one way up here in the top. Get up a back. You still want to have a sticky header and footer. I don't know. But hopefully, after our discussion today, you can think about how to integrate your map into your um, app of some kind. Maps are very important. I think you should look into the Google API map. Um, and see if they have features that can help you. What do you guys think of maps? Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I was looking at how to use the API in Google uh, video in the, uh, YouTube as well to integrate video other than just using the iframe, right? There's different ways to integrate video into your app where people can actually search a playlist and things like that. There's different features inside of YouTube that has the same function as like the map where you can customize the videos and things like that. 
there is an API for that as well. Um, I don't know. Did you all send me an idea? How about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No How about a menu? Did you go, go practice a menu? Anybody want to show us their burger menu? Sure. Okay, let me stop this.